my home may become the setting of a new horror movie. As I've realized something is living in here with me. And then we meet a man who, during the times of COVID, does not wear a mask outside. But what happens when the voices in his head tell him he has to? And then we meet a young woman who was simply trying to get a good night's sleep. Instead, she wakes up and finds herself surrounded in a darkness blacker than black. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. Hope you guys are having a great day too. Hope you guys are having tons of fun out there in the sun or in the snow, or maybe you're in like a little igloo. But I hope you're having fun no matter where you're at. Someone who always has fun, someone who always brings the party going to the igloos, coming into Dead Rabbit Command right now is one of our Thanksgiving live stream YouTube donators. Give it up for Nicole Magenta. Everyone give a big round of applause for Nicole. Do a little bow. If you can't support the Patreon, that's fine too. I totally understand that. Just help spread the word about the show really, really helps out a lot. Now, you guys have heard the intro. We got a ton of stuff to cover this episode. So, Nicole, I'm going to toss you the keys to the Dead Rabbit Dune Buggy. We're leaving behind Dead Rabbit Command. We're headed all the way out to my place. (laughs) Nicole driving us out over the dunes back to my place. Apparently, I live in the Sahara. So, I've lived here for about 11 years in this place. And in those 11 years, I have never I've never written a mysterious word on my wall and then repainted over it. I've lived here for 11 years, and about three days ago, I'm sitting here, I'm hanging out, and I look over and I see, clearly, a word written on my wall that's been painted over. Starts with an S, can't see the other letter, it looks like maybe a T in the middle that's larger than the rest of the word. Can't see the letter after that, and then the last letter appears to be R. Five-letter word, S, maybe a T, and an R. And I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, here's the logical explanation. I just recently replaced three light bulbs in my apartment, which right there, I never even made the connection that that could be paranormal-related, because electrical, right? I just replaced three light bulbs in my place in, like, the past week, and I replaced old CFL ones with those new LED ones. So the lighting has changed in the apartment. And so the logical explanation was this was written here before I moved in, and I never really saw it with just the way the light interacted with my place. Now that I've changed light bulbs, I can clearly see it. Plus, I used to have more, st- I used to store more stuff on that side of the, but I don't anymore. But I stopped storing stuff there a couple weeks ago, so why is it appearing now? That brings us to the paranormal answer, right? That brings us to the paranormal answer. I've talked a lot about my apartment being haunted on this show. I'll try to find some episodes to put in the show notes, but I've mentioned it so many times about my apartment being haunted, but it's been a long time since I've had anything substantial happen here. But like I said, I was talking to old friends, and I said, hey, do you recognize this on the wall? And they don't. They don't remember seeing that before. So did something write on my wall? Did something, some force come in and write on my wall? And I got to say, when I looked over at it, I immediately knew what that word meant. I immediately was like, are you kidding me? Because it's either a trick of the light. It could be absolutely nothing. It could be a painter drying off his paintbrush. It could be always have been there and it painted up this word back then, which would still be concerning. I'm looking at that and I go, if it says anything, that says Sater. S-A-T-Y-R. Which are the half horse permanent erection nature gods that just ran around banging animals and women. And I swear, I swear, out of all of the paranormal creatures I could possibly meet, that is the lowest. That's the lowest. I do not want to hang out with a dude with a permanent erection. Uh, Let me back up here. I hope he just wants to hang out, right? (laughs) If he's manifesting into this universe with a giant horse erection, I'm out. I'm leaving. So, you only get one good horror movie in you, right? Like, you never hear about anyone who escaped from the serial killer and then got got trapped in a haunted house and had to do an exorcism. You get one good horror movie. Some people get none, and that's probably the best thing. But if you are going to have one, you get one. Can my horror movie not be... Can my horror movie not be about a satyr running around my apartment? 
That would be so annoying. Maybe it's a Harry and the Hendersons thing. Maybe we teach him how to... Maybe we teach him how to not bang animals and random women. And he teaches us the values of love. How, how much he loves banging animals and random women. Uh, so anyways, I'll, I will keep you updated on Satergate. If the word continues to appear, then... That I'm moving. If I start to make horse noises very, very accurately on this podcast, I might have been taken over by the satyr. But I will keep you guys updated on this possibly totally natural phenomenon or a very, disapp very, very disappointing haunting. Nicole, I'm going to go ahead and toss you the keys to the Dead Rabbit Dirgible. We're going to say goodbye to my place. See you later, bro. And take us up, up and away. And we're headed out to a small town in suburban America. <laughs> The reason why we're headed out here is I recently came across this post online. This person starts off by saying, I want to get all the political stuff out of the way. I'm neither pro-mask or anti-mask. But, but this story involves masks. So I just, I just want to make it clear to everyone, I do not care about your opinion on masks. This story involves masks. So that's how the poster of this terminal plan Laid it out. I don't care about your opinion. I, let me let me just talk about masks for two minutes. And they go on to say, so I have a mask exemption. That's why I really don't care about it. I can't wear one anyway. So I'm constantly having to deal with that. So what happened was a few weeks ago, this guy, let's call him Terry. So Terry explains this story. A couple weeks ago, he's sitting at home with his mom and his dad, just hanging out, watching the old boob tube. They actually were probably all doing their own separate thing with headphones and smart devices. But he's sitting there... And all of a sudden, he hears a noise coming from the kitchen. And he turns and he looks, and the kitchen is empty. He's just staring off in there. What he hears is the sound of a group of people talking in his kitchen. His empty kitchen. He looks at his mom and his dad, and they don't seem to be bothered by it. It's almost like they can't hear this very, very loud conversation. Now, Terry can't place what the voices are saying. He just, you know how you kind of hear that rumble like when you're in a club and you're in the bathroom and you can still hear the noise from the club on the other side of the wall? It's like that. He hears this sound. He can't understand what they're saying, but he knows their sound. And he said it sounds like it was coming through an old PA system. It wasn't clean. It wasn't crisp. It was staticky. It was crackling. But it was voices. On December 3rd, 2021, so just a few days ago for us, Terry's sitting in his computer, working, and he hears a voice, a singular voice this time, whisper in his ear. It's a voice he recognizes as someone familiar, but he can't place it. He's heard it before, but he doesn't know who it comes from. And this voice says clearly in his ear, Wear a mask. He didn't have his speakers playing. He had no headphones on. He was sitting there quietly in his room, and he heard a voice go, Wear a mask. Now this thread, after he posted this, it immediately became what he tried to avoid. It became an argument over masking and mask mandates and pro-mask and anti-mask. And ugh. Hey, we're all tired of hearing about that. We just want to hear about ghost stories, even when we're reading them online. So, but that was what they were trying to avoid. That's what happens. But then a lot of the other posts, and I will agree with this, a lot of the other posts were... You might want to go to you might want to go to a doctor and get that checked out. And I agree, even though we talk about the paranormal, when you do have concerns about your sanity or you're hearing voices, or maybe you think you're sane, but you are hearing voices or hallucinating, yeah, it doesn't hurt to go talk to someone. I can almost guarantee that it's stress. I when I'm really stressed out, I hallucinate smells. Auditory hallucinations happen. I will smell raw garbage, raw, smelly sewage. When I am really, really stressed out. First thing I do is look, make sure there's no Arby's around me. And I go, okay, so it smells not coming from there. It must be coming. Because there's no other place that smells like raw sewage other than my imagination and America's least favorite roast beef restaurant. So it's probably stress. You can, you can hallucinate voices and stuff like that. Get it checked out. But looking at the conspiracy theory angle here. I recommend I recommend getting checked out before you listen to the next five minutes of this podcast because I'm going to go real deep into some paranoid delusions. 
You could go with a dystopian idea that this is the first test of a system to beam messages into the people who don't do what the government says. Like, what if he's not the only one experiencing this auditory hallucination? What if the government has now realized everyone who's not doing what it says, and they can beam these messages into people's heads until they follow what the voices say? Far-fetched? Yeah. Would the government do it over masks? No. But if you were simply testing out the technology just to see what the long-term ramifications are, what better time to do it when people are already fearful? So you monitor so many, see they're not wearing their masks in this sector of town, in that sector of town. The amount of information private companies have on us is mind-boggling, and the government just scoops that stuff up. They know where we're at. They know what we're wearing. They know what we're doing. And by all appearances, they tend to leave us alone. But what if that's not the case? Like, what if this is a trial run? There's been a long-standing long standing history in the conspiracy theory community and schizophrenia. And I'm not saying that as an insult. I'm not saying schizophrenics who are conspiracy theorists or conspiracy theorists who are schizophrenics. In deep conspiracy lore, there is a lot of talk. I don't know how much proof there is. Proof is a slippery word in conspiracy, but a lot of talk that a lot of people who are quote-unquote crazy are driven crazy by the government or private institutions. They're, are they hearing voices because they have schizophrenia, or do they have schizophrenia-like symptoms that are induced by a powerful adversary? That's classic conspiracy theory lore. Going all the way back to the 60s where when you got metal fillings in your teeth, you could pick up Russian radio waves. Like, that was a common trope. That's how you trolled conspiracy theorists back when I was growing up. 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, stuff like that. The tinfoil hat and the picking up the radio waves on their teeth. It, oh, when I said that, I know a lot of older listeners, a lot of listeners my age, they go, I remember that. That was really popular. Now it's a flat earth. You're just a flat earther, things like that. QAnon, you're just a QAnon guy. And that's how they dismiss you. Back then it was, you're getting radio waves from the Russians in your teeth. So the idea of hearing voices, is it a... I'll tell you this right now. Medically, if you do hear voices, please go get it checked out. I'm not saying that the government is trying to take you over. I'm saying definitely go get that checked out. 99.999% it's a medical thing that can be treated. And I want to make sure I say that. But what if the other 0.0001% is this? And this guy's a test for that. And we can also be... We can have our conspiracy cap on and be a little more optimistic. It's possible that... By not wearing a mask, this particular gentleman may be going to catch something in the future, and it's a time traveler. Or an angel, right? I mean, I guess that's kind of... I, I, I explained this entire dystopian future. I'm like, or angels. Uh, it could be a warning to for him to wear a mask for an upcoming event. Maybe there'll be a maybe there'll be a very vicious pie fight going on, and he will choke on the cream unless he has that mask on. So I don't know. It's probably just a stress... Um, I would recommend going to the doctor. If you if you do start thinking the government's stalking you, I hope that I didn't put it in your head. And be prepared for that pie fight, Terry. I think was your name that I gave you. But whether it's biological or paranormal or, or time traveler or an angel, definitely an interesting story. Nicole, I'm going to toss you the keys to the world-famous carpenter copter. We're leaving behind this boy's bedroom. We are headed all the way out to Blue Springs, Missouri. <laughs> On September 25th, 1981, in Blue Springs, Missouri, there is a 15-year-old girl trying to fall asleep. It's 10 p.m. The sun has set. Little owls are, like, hanging out on trees, doing their thing. This 15-year-old girl, we'll call her Margaret. No, I hate that name. This 15-year-old girl, we'll call her Michelle. Michelle is laying in bed. She's trying to go to sleep. And she hears a sound coming from her closet. She's, she's trying to fall asleep, and it sounds like there's a squirrel in there. Now, I don't know much about M Missouri. I barely know how to pronounce it. But that's super bizarre. It, that's, that's not normal in any other part of the United States, right? I'm not the only one who's never woken up to a squirrel in my closet. And to not be surprised, because she just goes, oh, I'm going to go back to sleep. If I found a squirrel in my closet, we would become the best friends, dude. I would be feeding him nuts. I'd be, like, getting, like, peanuts and stuff. I'd be getting him, like, walnuts. Nuts he never had before. Almonds. 
And we'd like hang out in the closet all day long. That, that would be dope. And he'd be one of those pets that you wouldn't have to like potty train because he would go outside and poop outside. And then um, he could also sew my clothes. He could mend my jacket with his little tiny sewing hands. So I would jump up with joy if there was a squirrel in my closet, even if I was trying to get to bed. But she tries to go back to sleep. And then she starts to hear the sound of paper crinkling. It's more like the Matrix disintegrating, but she's hearing that sound. And she realizes, okay, squirrels... Apparently Jason has a squirrel fetish. He watched too much Rescue Rangers back in the day. But she goes, squirrels aren't, squirrels aren't known for their paper crinkling abilities. And at that point, she begins to hear voices in her room. And I actually didn't plan this. I sometimes pull these stories randomly. She all I did not plan this. She also hears voices like it's a big party going on. But this is not coming from the kitchen or somewhere else. This is coming from her bedroom. Now, she's laying there on her left side. And she's kind of looking into the left side of the room. She's laying there. And when she hears all of these voices, she's thinking about getting up and walking to look out the window. Because she's thinking it must be coming from outside. Obviously, there's nothing in her room. And right as she's thinking that, right as she's thinking about getting up off that bed, she hears a vo- I didn't. I forgot these stories were so similar. Right when she's thinking about getting out of bed, she hears a voice clear as day in her right ear. It says a whole sentence, but she only understands the last two words. The gun. She immediately rolls over to face the noise. Within a split second, she's in a pitch black void. She's flat on her back. And her right arm is extended all the way out and up. She's completely paralyzed. She says the room is so black, she looks up and she can't see the tips of her fingers. Her whole body begins to hum with a painless electrical current. And she starts to levitate off the bed. She's spinning around. <laughs> I mean, this part's kind of funny, right? This part sounds kind of fun, other than the horrible things that are going on. She begins to slowly spin, like counterclockwise, above the bed. So, as far as she's concerned, she's in absolute pitch black void at this point. There is nothing around her, but she feels her body slowly spin around. And then, once she is realigned with the bed, once the head is aligned with the pillow, the paralysis is done, and she falls to the bed. Her body's still filled with that electrical current, but she can move. And the first thing she does is she grabs her phone. Grabs her landline phone. This is back in 1981, and when she picks it up, there's a dial tone. It doesn't work. Michelle jumps off the bed and is now standing in this void, but it still feels familiar to her. It still feels like her room. So she begins running towards where she knows the door is. And when she gets to the door, it's gone. Instead is a pitch black tunnel leading into oblivion. Michelle steps backwards and looks at this tunnel that is so Black, so dark, so devoid of anything. It is blacker than the void that surrounds it. It is impossibly dark. Michelle screams. And her voice is nothing but an electronically distorted vibration coming out of her body. <laughs> She throws her hand over her mouth in shock. No, no pun intended. She throws her hand over her mouth in shock. And then she's back in bed. Laying on her left side. The room has returned to normal. Her voice has returned to normal. The time is 10, 10 p.m. I got that story from thinkaboutitdocs.com, one of the best repositories of UFO paranormal lore. 
they got it from the National UFO Research Center, which also is compiles all this information. Really, really good database if you're into this stuff, which you should be, because it's totally awesome. So this is the third time on this show we have covered a similar story about someone waking up in their room being this pitch black void. And I, I, I'm it's, that's really interesting to me. It really, really is. And there have been other black bedroom stories I've come across recently that I haven't covered because it's kind of just the same thing we've talked about. And I'm starting to wonder how common this event is. Now, fair enough, they could just be dreaming. It is a phenomenon called the black bedroom. It takes place at night in bedrooms where people are known for sleeping and dreaming. That's a true. But we've now covered three stories on this show about people who get up and they're moving around their own bedroom and it's pitch black. They can't see anything and the walls seem impossibly far. They can't get out. I'm starting to wonder how common this is. Because this shows just how... This is a common theme this week. We talked on Monday about how the giant came to the Volga region in Russia and it was making the people feel sad and it was kind of affecting their moods and it was causing miscarriages. And I said then, that shows how powerless we are in the face of these beings. And this kind of go I don't know why I'm finding these stories all of a sudden. I don't know why they're popping up. Maybe it's to warn me that I will be powerless to stop the satyr's lust. But... I we had this story now as well, where there was nothing she could do to prevent this. Once it was in action, everything was moving so, no pun intended, like clockwork, that there was no way she could break out until they wanted to let her go. She's lost in this void. She can't speak. She can't feel. She can't see. Powerless. Powerless. But one thing I didn't intend was the similarities between the two stories. So let's put on our conspiracy caps and wrap it up like this. What if other people who are trapped in these black rooms... One common theme among these black rooms is that you can't get out of them. You can't find the door. But what if some people do? And they walk through that unbelievable blackness into eternity. They may show up that they just died in their sleep. Their lifeless body still laying in bed. They went peacefully. But what if a darker answer is still out there? As they fly through the void, screaming in electrical pain, their voices are heard across the globe. It's the sounds of madness. The sounds of humans crying out. Lost souls seeking new lost souls. Misery may love company, but madness demands it. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash DeadRabbitRadio. TikTok is at DeadRabbitRadio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys.